When FCA first introduced the Hellcat a couple of years ago, we all fell in love with its intoxicating mix of power, speed, and the noises it made. However, the biggest problem with the Hellcat was its inability to put that power to the pavement. Well, Jeep has a solution for that. I'm here in beautiful Portland, Oregon, and we're testing out the 2018 Jeep Trackhawk. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is a pretty important model for Jeep. For me, this is actually my favorite uh, vehicle in the Jeep lineup, and this particular generation has been around since 2011, so it's getting up there uh, in the years. Jeep gave it a pretty heavy refresh back in 2014. Uh, however, uh, the Trackhawk model now sits at the hierarchy. This is above the Jeep SRT. It has that supercharged uh, 707 horsepower Hellcat V8 engine. Now you can see the design of this car got a pretty extensive redo in 2014. Uh, that's when Jeep updated the headlights. They're a little bit skinnier. They have LED running lights, they're by Xenons. Um, the grille is also unique to the SRT models. The Hellcat kind of gives you a little bit more scoops in here to cool that big V8. And you really can see how much lower and wider the Trackhawk model is, um, kind of going more with that performance theme. Jeep says this is the most performance-oriented vehicle they've ever produced. Now, if you guys know the Grand Cherokee's platform, this is actually a Mercedes ML underneath. It was when Mercedes and uh, Chrysler were still sharing uh, components and such. And honestly, it still drives and feels really nice. Uh, I'll go into the test drive later on. Now, you can distinguish the Trackhawk Trackhawk model from the sides uh, with the with the wheels and the the brakes. Uh, this is the only model to get the yellow calipers. These are Brembo six pistons with 15 and a half inch rotors. They're massive brakes on 295 uh, wide tires on 20 inch wheels. You'll also be able to distinguish it with the supercharged badge under the Grand Cherokee. Just a little subtle hints to remind you this is the special Jeep. Now this is a mid-sized vehicle. There's no third row on this car. Same platform as the Dodge Durango, which is again the same ML platform. So if you want a third row, you have to get that vehicle. And I really love the proportions. I think it's one of the most handsome SUVs on the market. Very traditional look that I think will age very well. Now at the back, again, you have darkened taillights, a Trackhawk badge, and then these very, very nice looking black finished uh, quad exhaust, which really um, show off the sound of this car. It's one of the best sounding V8s on the market. Uh, and I really think that the Trackhawk, even though it's the most expensive Jeep, this is really something that feels super special. It's one of the best driving SUVs that you'll be able to get and one of the quickest accelerating as well. Just like the Hellcat, the Trackhawk also comes with the red or black key. Thankfully, uh, FCA gave me the red key for this video. You can see it's the same uh, Chrysler uh, key that you all know. It's got remote start, it's got the usual buttons. It's a smart key system. Keep the key fob in your pocket and then to lock the door, just touch this button here. I locks the door for you to unlock it, touch the back of the handle, and there's a sensor, it unlocks the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, Jeep made pretty heavy updates to the interior for 2014, uh, and the Trackhawk has a couple of specific things. The seats have some Trackhawk badges embroidered in it. The, they have more aggressive bolstering, contrasting stitching. It's a pretty nice cabin. Honestly, my tester has like an upgrade to give you leather throughout the cabin. You can see there's leather on the door panel, uh, real carbon fiber, leather even down here. So this interior certainly looks much more expensive. I'm not sure it, were, it looks the price tag that Jeep is offering, but it's a lot more special than the you know, Grand Cherokee pickup from the rental counter. Now, stepping inside the vehicle, it has a really nice step in height. It's a little bit lower than some of the other Jeeps, of course, because this is the Trackhawk model, but then when you shut the door, it could sound a little bit more solid. I mean, this is an older platform, so it doesn't really surprise me that it doesn't sound quite as, you know, bank fault as some of the newer competition. But uh, as I said before, push button start, put your foot on the brake, push this red button here to start the engine up. Now compared to the Hellcat, this actually sounds a little bit more quiet uh, when you first start the vehicle up. So that surprised me a tad. <laughs> Luckily, when you start revving it up, it reminds you again that there is a Hellcat motor uh, basically breathing underneath that hood. Now, looking at the rest of the interior, I really like the actual design of the interior for this car. Love the dash design, love the leather stitching everywhere, love the authentic carbon fiber with the aluminum trim, the black plastic here. The steering wheel also is really nice. It's nice and thick and big. I mean, this really feels good in your hands. I like the flat bottom. I uh, love how big it is. I love the paddle shifters here, which are made from aluminum, and the gauges also 
also they were updated uh, slightly unique for the Trackhawk model. Um, love the digital uh, LCD display in the center with the traditional analog on the outside. One thing I feel like this car could use is a head-up display. It's not available, which I think is a mistake at this price point because you really lose track of the speed. Now, over here, this is the 8.4 inch uh, Chrysler Uconnect head unit. It's very good. This is basically one of, one of the best in the system. I'm not going to go too much in depth with it. The touch response is really fast. The map is a Garmin-based navigation system. It gets the job done. It works like a tablet. You can pinch, you can zoom, you can swipe. There's a performance app here uh, because this is an SRT product where you can basically just show all your um, you know, track times, your G meters, your uh, zero to 60 timers, um, stuff like that. It takes a little bit of time to load, which I find sometimes it didn't load, sometimes it did, but there it goes right there. You can see special gauges there that show all your you know, different uh, vitals of the engine. There's even like a dyno mode here. That's interesting to show how much power it's making. So that's pretty cool. Again, kind of gimmicky, but uh, FCA really wants to show that they're uh, just how performance fo focused this vehicle is. Now, over here you have your controls uh, for your radio, for your climate control. Some of the active driver assistance tech is also found right here. This vehicle surprisingly has an eco mode there, so it helps to try to save gas. Uh, Jeep replaced the shifter uh, back in 2014 when those rotary shifters, I believe, were having all those recalls and somebody actually died from it. A uh, celebrity got crushed because he didn't realize it was uh, not in park. So it's nice to see they go with a traditional shifter now. It's got the traditional gates here. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you have a backup camera with trajectory, uh, distance markers, no 360 camera. I kind of think they should have given you that at this price point. Now down here is your drive mode selector. You can see there's no like off-road mode. There is a launch button here. We'll go into the test drive and test that later. Um, it always defa defaults to an automatic setting. There's also a snow, a tow mode, and then sport and track. It's kind of funny to me to see a track mode in a Jeep because I just don't picture taking this vehicle to a, to a track, a racetrack, but we'll go into the test drive later. We'll see how it drives. Um, the center console here is pretty much covered or filled with a uh, CD or DVD player in the remote because this vehicle has the rear seat entertainment system. That's why it's so expensive. It's nice and padded here. Uh, my tester also has the optional panoramic sunroof, which I believe is like 1500 bucks. So it's pretty expensive, but it's nice. The glove compartment here, it's a huge glove compartment. It's damped, it's lined with felt. I mean, overall, I think this interior, super nice, super high quality for a Jeep. I'm just not sure it's, you know, high quality enough for the price that they're asking, but a lot of you are pretty, gonna be pretty happy uh, spending some time in the inside of this vehicle. Cool. Looking at the rear seat, you can see it's a very generous amount of space. The Grand Cherokee is only available with two rows, as I said. Um, so if you're going to do that, you're going to give more space to the cargo and the second row passengers. Now stepping in, it has a nice easy step in height, just like the front. And then when you shut the door, it sounds pretty much the same as the front. All the nice leather stitching carries over to the back doors. So that's nice. It's even leathered down here. So they really spoil you here when you option in that upgraded leather package. Now, my tester has heated rear seats as well. They're two level. There's two USB ports, a power outlet, there's vents back here, which is nice. And then there's even an HDMI port and a, a RCA port in the rear seat entertainment system, which you can see here, it has dual headrests, which to me, rear seat entertainment systems are kind of getting dated. Most people are kind of just buying their kids iPads instead of going with this, but it's nice that Jeep still kind of offers that old school option. The seats themselves, they have nice a nice armrest here uh, with some cup holders, and then they also fold down 60-40 and they recline to give you a little bit more comfort on those longer trips. So the Trackhawk is still an SUV, so how does it function when you actually need to put stuff in the cargo area? Now, as you can see, my tester has a power tailgate. It's kind of slow to move, which kind of shows that this is a little bit of an older design. Now, when you look at the cargo area, as I said before, there's no third row, which means Jeep was able to give you more space. What you're looking at is around 35 cubic feet of space with the second row up. You fold those down, you get just under 70 cubic feet of space, which is pretty much on par with this midsize segment. Underneath the floor here, Jeep gives you a temporary spare tire at least, so you don't have to deal uh, with a fix a flat kit. So underneath the hood of this big bad Jeep, you're looking at the same supercharged Hemi V8 that we see in the Hellcat, 6.2 liters, 707 horsepower and slightly less torque, 645 pound feet. You can see it's a pretty tight fit. Now, it all goes out through an all wheel drive system. Jeep says this is not trail rated, so don't try to take this off road. I feel it has a little bit of ground clearance, not really much by Jeep standards. Now, luckily it still can tow. Jeep says it'll tow about 7,200 pounds. So tow your track vehicle to the track and then beat it at the track with this when you actually race it, it's probably faster anyways. Now, 
It's a heavy vehicle, weighs around 5,500 pounds. It all goes out through an eight speed ZF sourced automatic. Jeep says it'll get to 60 in three and a half seconds. And fuel economy, I don't believe it's been rated by the EPA yet. The SRT model is rated at like 13, 19. This is probably less than that. You didn't buy this to save gas. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. All right, the moment you've been waiting for. As I showed you in my Hellcat review earlier, or earlier today that I filmed, uh, it still gets a little squirmy, so I'm really curious to see what happens when you put all-wheel drive with the Hellcat motor. Definitely we'll be able to put the power down at least this time. Uh, and, you know, even though this is heavier, it's still fast. I mean, three and a half seconds, that's fast. However way you slice it. Now my initial impressions are pretty positive. The Grand Cherokee feels really solid. I mean, even though this platform is super old, it uh, offers a lot still. I mean, Mercedes tends to over-engineer their vehicles and this platform feels incredibly solid. It's just a really heavy, vault-like feeling vehicle that uh, feels good. Oh, f <laughs> Oh my God! All right, hold on one second while my, my the fluid in my head kind of goes back to the front. Oh, so earlier again today, I drove the GTR Nismo and that launched pretty hard. This is pretty damn similar, honestly. I mean, three and a half seconds. I haven't felt like this kind of rush since I did, like I rode a roller coaster and I have to try that one more time. Just really quickly, I have to try it one more time. To launch, the, to launch the car, just push this launch button here. It quickly does that. It tells you to apply the brakes and then full throttle. It holds the revs at 2,500, then release it. Holy sh <laughs> Oh my God! I love it! It's so fast! Oh my God! Oh. All right, this car's naughty. Wow, every Hellcat should be all-wheel drive. I am just shocked. I'm so shocked. It's so easy too. This is way easier than the Nismo. Just push a button and put the brakes and just let go. Like there's no lag. It just kind of goes. But all right, enough with the launch control. How does the Trackhawk handle? Because this is still an SUV. I have to say the steering is really impressive for an SUV. You can see how it's quick to respond. It has some body lean, you feel it. But of course it's still an SUV. It still sets up higher, but I really can't say you know, if it could, I could go on a track with this car, I mean, I need to take it out on a track. I'd be kind of scared, honestly, because this is still a big vehicle. You feel the weight of this thing. But really, what impresses me the most is how well it can go in a straight line. I am just amazed, you know, even on these roads, on these roads here, you know, it can handle some corners, but wow. But let me put the car into its automatic setting. It'll kind of settle down a little bit. Um, the ride is pretty firm. Um, these 20 inch wheels definitely show you all the bumps you're there. You're no, you're known You're well aware of all the bumps in this car and it's relatively quiet in terms of wind noise The engine sounds lovely. So I'm not gonna complain about that. The road noise is kind of high But I am in Portland and the roads here are so crappy um, So everything to me has been pretty loud except for a Rolls-Royce that I drove earlier today But I'm just impressed. This is such an easy car to drive when you have it in its automatic setting. It's a pussycat like it's quiet, the transmission, the eight speed has quick refined shifts and then it shifts hard and fast and it's so responsive. Best transmission that you can buy on the market is a CF eight speed. The visibility in here is also good, great view. It's got no weird angles and such. So, you know, great, you know, um, big side mirrors. It has all the driver assistance tech on this car. So it has full speed range adaptive cruise, active lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking. But you can see here when it's in comfort, as you go over some bumps and dips, it kind of feels a little bit softer. I feel the softness of it. But wow, this car is crazy. So in terms of its acceleration, its performance, it feels like it's worth the money that Jeep's asking for. But it's really when you start looking at the rest of the package, that's where you start to see the faults that the Trackhawk can have. <laughs> oh, listen to the way that thing sounds when it shifts. It just makes those lovely farting noises that I just love. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> This is definitely one of the surprises of the day. This is one of the best driving SUVs I have ever driven without a doubt. And it's just crazy to me that this is a Jeep. Jeep is not known for performance. They're always known for their off-road capability, but oh my, my, my word, this is just, I'm speechless.
Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just having too much fun. This is such a, a naughty car. It just makes you want to do bad things. I, I don't know how you could drive this car, you know, without putting your foot down. It's hard. It's going to take some discipline, but wow. The, the, anytime you drive a Trackhawk, if you, if you guys get an opportunity to actually be able to afford a car like this, this is one of the best, like this will change your perception of SUVs. It shows you that SUVs can be fun and it's all available in a Jeep. So to show you just how brutal the Trackhawk is, I'm going to put somebody, my camera guy actually, Keith, who has not been in this car yet with the launch control on. You put it into sport, push this launch button here. It literally, actually, all right, so now you just apply brake pressure and then floor the gas. Let go. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it said 0 to 60 Woo! within 3.6 seconds. Oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's racing so hard. That was fantastic. Look, we have to do oh. it again, don't we? Hell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to do it one more time just because we can. Oh. All right, so sport mode, launch. Apply brake pressure, full throttle. Hold on. Woo! <laughs> oh God, that is never gonna get old. <laughs> no, I mean, never. that's why this car burns so much gas. I've literally used a quarter tank of gas in like 40 miles, so she's a thirsty girl. You gotta pay to play. <laughs> so one of the cool things about my job is being able to drive multiple cars in the same day sometimes. Now, earlier today, I actually was able to drive and film uh, the 2018 Challenger Hellcat Widebody. Now, I really loved the way the Hellcat Widebody handled and drove. It still had a little bit of trouble putting the power down, but after spending some time in the Trackhawk, oh my God, this is basically how the Hellcat engine is supposed to be paired with. It should all come with all-wheel drive as standard, as you guys saw the launch control, the fact that this has so much grip. In fact, it has so much power, you can still make all four wheels do a burnout or spin out if you guys are a little aggressive on the throttle. But unlike the Hellcat, it doesn't start to slide and get sideways and fishtail and scare the hell out of you, honestly, uh, when you are driving this aggressively. So you actually have the ability to use all 700 horsepower out on the road, and it's intoxicating. It really uh, is super intoxicating. So what is all this going to cost you? Well, the Hellcat Grand Cherokee, or the Trackhawk, is an interesting proposition money-wise because it starts at $85,000, which is literally the most expensive out of all the Hellcat offerings in the FCA lineup. More expensive than the Demon. It also makes it the most expensive Jeep I've ever seen. Uh, now, this competes with vehicles like the BMW X5M and the Mercedes GLE 63S, um, which is only available in the coupe form, I believe. Those models, they don't have enough power, honestly. They have like 550, 577. The Jeep has more power than all of them. Uh, and if you look at the BMW Mercedes, they're over 100,000 to start. Now, my tester has basically every option you can get on this car, the Pano sunroof, the upgraded leather, uh, the upgraded uh, infotainment system and stereo. Uh, this car is just over $100,000, which I know it's freaking eye-opening. I never thought I'd be showing you guys a $100,000 Jeep. And that's where a couple of issues come in because the Hellcat engine's amazing. It drives great, it's fast, but it kind of just looks like every other Jeep doesn't really feel like luxurious enough to be charging that six figure price tag. But if that's not really a consideration for you, if you're just looking for the quickest, quickest accelerating, one of the best handling SUVs on the market, this should really be at the top of your list. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.